Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Carb Strong Cast. I'm really excited to share this episode with you, but at the same time a little bit disappointed. A volunteer of mine lost the audio for this podcast and I was very upset about that. Uh, James Aspie and I are very good friends and we are rarely in the same country together. Um, Although we lost the podcast audio, we didn't lose the video and there was some microphones on the cameras that are not the best audio, but they captured what we said. Now, um, for me, I have an expectation of quality for my content and it's disappointing in a way to upload this but I do believe that the conversation was valuable and if you don't mind the audio being a bit shabby and you still want to listen to what was said, then please do uh, tune into this podcast. But once again, I apologize for the bad audio. I thought I would upload it anyway because I believe you guys will get some value from this and again, the next one will be better audio quality. I really love James. We had a really good emotionally deep and thoughtful uh, conversation. And thank you again for your support. Very disappointed. But at the same time, it was still a great convo. So I hope you enjoy. Thanks a lot, guys. Show me a better way to reduce suffering on this planet at this magnitude Mm. to someone changing their diet, someone changing instead of cow's milk to get soy or rice or almond or coconut milk, having beans or tofu or tempeh instead of meat. That is so simple. Show me an easier way to save so many lives, to reduce so much suffering. There isn't one. All right, here we are, James Aspie. So my brother. This is the Carb Strong cast. I just started it the other day. I thought it'd be a good idea. Yeah, yeah, about time. <laughs> now, I just wanted to get this done because I thought we might there might be a little bit of an innings between seeing each other again. So mm. I wanted to have more of a long form conversation with you and see where you're at, see where your mindset's at, see what your focus is at the moment. Absolutely, brother. So we could talk about where you come from, where you're at, like, but I think most people probably know. Mm. Maybe a brief overview. Um I was someone who never cared about important issues really because I didn't have any effect in my life personally. I got cancer, I started caring a little more about the suffering of others and became a personal trainer trying to help where I could. I worked on a cruise ship, somebody told me eating animals is bad karma, I never cared about animals so it wasn't really about them but I did choose to start making different choices because I wanted better karma if that was even a thing that I didn't Mm. necessarily believe in. That led me to learning that we can be so much healthier and thrive and reduce our chances of so many diseases on a plant-based diet. Mm. And then I looked into the violence that's behind every single animal product and realized that that was completely out of alignment with the peaceful, compassionate, good person that I was raised to be and strive to be. And so I knew I needed to become vegan. I... On the same day, I finally went vegan after about a year of being vegetarian and trying to figure it out and see if there was any reason not to be vegan. I did a year-long vow of silence. I spoke for the first time on a morning TV show. Um, The vow of silence was to raise awareness for animals. I blogged the whole time and raised awareness about the things I had learned. Um, When I spoke for the first time, that interview was seen by over 10 million people. It was a very carefully thought through animal rights message, a plea to the world to align their actions with their values and leave violence off the menu. We can live in such a better way. And since then I've traveled the world giving uh, probably, I think it's close to 400 speeches now, all for free, um, attending events, trying to rally up the troops, man, and just inspire non-vegans to be vegan and vegans to become active. You were with me one time and we did a 25 hour uh, tattoo session to raise money for charity. And yeah, just basically trying to put content out most days, if not every day to light up the world man just to Mm. shed light on this atrocity and to show people how easy and how much better life can be when we all just switch to a plant-based diet and choose vegan um, products and yeah that's what i'm all about man that's what i'm trying to do and yeah i'm loving it i people someone was like i feel so sorry for you you get so much hate and it's a tough job you've got and obviously there's that part of it but could not feel more grateful Mm. to be contributing to such an important and um, revolutionize like that we can revolutionize the world yeah. so in, in such a positive way I'm so grateful to have a part in that and a part in people's journeys and 
yeah, man, it's just such a great thing to be a part of. So seems like you've got a really good perspective. Let's talk about perspective and let's talk about like when you were diagnosed with cancer, like obviously you could probably think, oh my God, like I'm, I'm, I could die here. Mm. Like what does that type of perspective do to you, the way you perceive the world and the way you perceive life and gratitude and how does that sure. perceive like then then you look at other people who are suffering or other animals that are suffering i'm trying to get into the psychology how that what that changes about someone i think that perspective is crucial in regards to your state of happiness and your health as well because i think it all plays a role your thoughts create your reality and whether positive or negative can impact whether you are healthy or unhealthy um, and also your motivation, if you think the world's never going to change, you're not going to be that inclined to want to try to bother because if it's never going to change, why even make the effort? Yeah. Um, when I had cancer, my first thoughts were, cool, okay, I've got cancer, but this isn't going to kill me. How could it? I'm too young. And a lot of that was actually just ignorant. I didn't really understand where yeah. I was at in terms of my health at that time. But that positive mindset was almost a default. It stayed with me. Mm-hmm. And it's something that I have since tried to build upon because I've seen the value in it. One of the, I think one of the things that I've um, brought to my audience of people following my journey is that mindset. A lot of people feel so much despair about the state of the world. And obviously that is one perspective. Mm-hmm. And that is a totally accurate perspective mm-hmm. in, in regards to the facts of what is happening. It's, It's absolutely unfathomable the amount of needless suffering and violence that is currently taking place that could be eliminated like that if people were just doing what vegans are already doing, which Mm. is having a mad time and eating delicious food and it's all easy. But um, I think what I brought to the table for a lot of people that are following my journey is a different perspective that you can focus on the good. You don't need to make yourself suffer because so many others are suffering. Mm. In fact, I don't think that's helpful. I think that's harmful to you helping to create change uh, unless you channel it in a specific way. But I think overall, if you can have the perspective of, yes, this is the facts, but here are also some other facts. Things are changing. Things are changing so fast compared to how they were even five years ago. We have vegan meat that is becoming mainstream and popular in some of the most world famous popular fast food chains Mm. all around the world we are seeing veganism in the media constantly Mm. we are seeing more transparency forced upon the dairy industry the egg industry people are starting to learn the facts there's more and more information coming out about the about the health benefits and the this disastrous uh, impacts of on health when we consume flesh and eggs and cow's milk so I just think that the perspective that helps more is to see the change that's happening, to put your attention on all the good that's happening, to realize that change is happening is because of all of our co- combined actions, collective mm-hmm. actions, as a team of people um, all around the world who can see a better way to live. And yeah, that perspective keeps me sane, it keeps me happy, it keeps me motivated. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think that's just so key to getting up in the morning and doing it all over again and answering the same questions all over again and viewing the footage and being there all over again, Mm. knowing that it is making an impact and it's going to happen. Interesting how like the collective consciousness, especially for this movement in particular, like whether we think it's possible, uh, can either drive motivation or suck away motivation and like anyone who ever believed they could achieve something first, they thought it was possible first and, and it was just an idea. So if we're, if we're focusing on, oh my God, this is an impossible task, I don't think that that's a helpful perspective to drive the, the change that we want, yeah? Of course, and actually, Joey, I remember it was probably a couple of years ago now, I remember you telling me that you saw, the, you saw it so clearly in your mind, the vegan world, it's already happened, you were saying mm. to me. Mm. That helped me, I thought, yeah, we need to keep that image clear in our mind. It's not like, is this, what way is this fight gonna go? Are we gonna make it? It's like, what? Of yeah. course, it's already done. Yeah. This is inevitable, it's yeah. just a matter of time. Yeah. And let's make this as soon as possible because so many lives can still be saved. But yeah, I think, I think your perspective back then helped me a lot. Keep a very clear picture in your head that this is how it's gonna be. And the more the more clear you can make that picture, the more you, you manifest that yeah. into reality. Because I think we get caught up in the how, how are we going to do uh-huh. this? Uh-huh. I think we need to focus on our intention and what the manifested result looks like. 
I remember my first mm. speech, right, <laughs> at the vegan camp out 2017, and uh, I was like, got, got any, it was, it was pretty good. It was you, excellent. Uh, you were like, but I remember I was a little bit questioning, like, ooh, like, how am I, do you have any advice for me, James? And you go, well, what's your intention? <laughs> and I was just like, wow. Yeah. Like, I didn't need to know anything more after uh-huh. that. That's what we should all focus on. What is your intention? Are you just going out there shooting in the wind or do you have a clear intention that you wake up to every morning? What is your perspective on intention? Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, that is so key because when you have the right intention, the actions will follow, the how will come. Mm. You don't need to stress as much about the how. It, you'll figure it out. I think the key point is definitely to have the intention. That's the only way that I've ever done my speeches. For example, when I found out I was speaking at the camp out, um, about six months ago or something like that, I was asked to speak again. I thought, okay, I will speak again. I'm sure I'll have something valuable I can think of to say, but it's six months away. I don't want to do the same speech I did to them last time, even though the facts haven't changed. My opinions are basically the same. Um, What am I going to do? And the same thing, I just thought, well, I'm just going to create my intention. And my intentions were something like to leave people feeling motivated. I want them to remember why we're doing this. I want them to um, feel that they have not only a responsibility and a duty, but also they have power to create an impact. And then my speech just flowed. I didn't have to write, okay, for the first few minutes, I'm going to talk about this, and then I'm going to talk about that. It was it was much more uh, useful for me to think about my intention. And I think that goes with, you know, all of our actions. When you're interacting with people, when you're writing a post, when you're creating a video, if you, and, and sometimes it gets so exhausting what am I going to write about today? Oh, I don't know. Let's scroll through your photos. What can I post about? And then if you just bring it back to what is the point in me doing this at all, the motivation comes so fast. Mm. When you speak from your heart and from that place of knowing and fro- through that intention, it's almost effortless, isn't it? Totally, man. Yeah, it just opens up a different um, channel for that, the words to come mm. and the, yeah, the energy flows in a different way. And... You, you, you're doing it for all the right reasons. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I forget. Sometimes I, I don't have as clear an intention. You know, yeah. like we're human beings. We go through flow. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think it's a great point to mention that it's, you know, to have your intention very clear for a long time. For a long time, my initial intention when I got into animal rights was to contribute to um, causing a kind of more peaceful world for us all to live. Mm. That was my intention probably the first for years or something like that and now my intention is also that but i've added to that i want to do as much good as possible while living as good of a life for myself as possible part of that is strategy in regards to when it comes to social media people want to see people living a happy life they don't want to just see the violence and things like that i'm just going off how i've seen other uh, channels and accounts grow to the mainstream so mm-hmm. that's a strategy okay so I need to put some of my life out there I need to do interesting things I need to have a good life but also it's from it's a strategy from a different perspective of seeing that so many activists burn out doing this it's a it's a horrible job in a way I mean in many ways to be constantly focused on cruelty suffering apathy ignorance um aggression you know it's yeah obviously that is can take its toll on a person and so the reason why it's not just to do as much good as possible but also to live as good a life for myself as possible mm-hmm. is because in the long run you know if this isn't something that is over in a decade and it does take multiple decades of my life which we will be here for and we won't stop until it's done or we've done as much as we possibly can then I want to be able to be my best for the long haul mm-hmm. and how I've seen certain people burn out you know who um who i've been close with over time myself personally i feel that i am much better than i've ever been right now in in regards to mental health Mm -hmm. and and clarity in the message and effectiveness Mm -hmm. um and i think that's because now i have more balance of of um this this intention where i felt like also i needed to really do so much for them and nothing for myself Mm -hmm. I was burning out a lot. I um, I wasn't feeling good. The world got very dark for a while there. Um, and I realized that actually didn't work for me. Yeah. But I felt like that dedication was very important mm. because it just solidified my deep, um, my deep need, need to 
need to do whatever I can and I felt a responsibility to the animals which I still do now yeah. Um, but yeah I guess I'm just finding you know and it'll, it'll continue to change yeah. I'm sure but just finding ways to do this sustainably be as effective as possible and continue to keep going yeah I think you're looking at the, the long game here and I think that's a wise move because I was around for about the time when you went a little bit downhill and that's because I feel like you were um, it was like you were using your energy in not the most effective way. You were mm. bouncing around the world doing speech after speech after video after, and then you were talking to hundreds of people after every speech and just using your energy in not a very, um, it was a very unsustainable way. You were yeah. giving too much of yourself before you'd filled your cup back up. Mm. And there are ways where you can give to thousands of people without putting out that type of physical energy in the moment. And I felt like maybe... Um, that was just a misuse of your energy. Absolutely, man. I feel like it was not the most productive way to be. And I still don't feel like I'm doing things as productive as possible. I'm still bouncing around the world and I'm still, you know, it's hard to say no to opportunities when someone yeah. says, come and speak about animal rights. It's hard to be like, nah, I'm just, I think it, I, I can't, man. Like my, my, um, my main skill is public speaking yeah. about this. Yeah. Um, I've done so many speeches. I've thought about this so much. Um, I hear the feedback from yep. people after a speech. I know how well it works. Yep. So it's hard to say no, but on the other hand, I know how far reaching one single video can be from the comfort of my own home. Yeah. So yeah, and this is something that I'm working towards to take it even more sustainable and, and not just more sustainable, but have a further reach yep. by setting up something um, more of a home base, which I haven't yep. had since I became an activist. I've been bouncing around constantly. I haven't yep. spent I haven't spent two months um, anywhere since for six years now, and I'm mm. hoping that next year I can just settle down a little bit and focus more on content rather than me in person being in all these places and giving so much. Yeah. And I think yeah, that's I think what you're doing actually is great, man. You you've I've been trying to I've been aspiring to this, although schedules haven't hasn't permitted. But this is the goal. I think what you do is very very smart, very very productive and effective. You go hard. You go do a tour, you record so much, then you come back and you put it all together. I go hard in a different way. So it's like exercising a different muscle and a different form of stress, which mm, is like, exactly. so there's one form of stress. Like I actually worked out like with the Europe tour, that really taught me a lot because mm. I pushed myself to the absolute limit and I was really at breaking point because of the flights were so close together and I was doing like three events a day in like so 15 cities in three weeks. And I was just like thinking, I'm gonna go as hard as I can. But I got a lot of content out of that. Got a lot of footage and I, mm. made, I made a big change, but it made me think like, wait a second, like I could have been based right here in London, going to exactly the same amount of um, events, mm -hmm. filming exactly the same amount of content, having a good sleep, training in the morning, yeah. and uh, peppering that content out on social media. It was just yeah. a bad use of my energy. And I, I've learned that and I've learned when to say no. Mm. And I've learned to do this good. thing called evaluation where I'm like, Okay, what's the cost benefit ratio here? Mm, you know, mm. could I make a bigger impact for animals right here, or should I fly across the world to this mm. place to do a speech at a vegan festival? It's just not going to be a good use of my funding or time or energy. Sure, I think though, mm. I, I totally agree with what you just said. Mm. That is something always to consider, but you just never know as well what's coming. Yeah, and, and sometimes you just sort of have to use your intuition. Yeah. sometimes it. You can evaluate to the best of your ability based on the information you've got, yeah. but that's always going to be lacking a full knowledge of what might be coming. So yeah. for example, I was invited to do a speech at, in Norway mm -hmm. and I got there, I was jet lagged. I looked at the crowd, there was literally 20 people there. Yeah. I thought, oh my God, I can't believe I've flown all the way across the world to give this speech. I was told there was going to be way more people here. Mm -hmm. um, I felt angry, mm -hmm. you know, just this is stupid. I shouldn't have done this. And a video came out of that, vegan versus Christian. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that reached over a million people. Yeah. And so, okay, I traveled across the world. It cost money. It was a lot of time. I was very tired. Over a million people got the vegan message yeah. because of that. And it did have an impact that I was absolutely not expecting. Um, so sometimes, yeah. yeah, like, you know, you can, you can try to weigh that up. Also, there's the benefit of, you know, people... People who are following our journey, which is a lot of people, yeah, um, they they want to meet and mm -hmm. um, you know just just say hi to us and and um, tell us that they appreciate a video that we made yeah. or share their own stories or whatever it is. And 
you know, if we can also do the rounds from time to time yeah. to draw more people to these events. For example, so many people come and they say, this is the first vigil I've ever been to. I'm here because you put it on your Instagram story. Um, then I'm gonna say, great, and please don't let this be the only vigil that you come to just because I'm here. Please come back. And often they'll be like, I, I will now that I'm here and I see how it works. I thought it was gonna be so extreme and it would be far more um, aggressive with all the activists, but it's peaceful and it's effective. You know, that might resonate with a lot of people and then they will be back again and again and again. And then they, you know, you hear people saying, yeah, I've been an activist for five, one girl last night I met. Four and a half years ago, I watched your video. I've been an activist ever since. I've done this, that, my yeah. whole family, this, that. I'm just like, Beautiful. wow, I'm so glad that, you know, we made the effort. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's hard to call. And, and again, it comes down to what you've got to offer and trying to evaluate to the best of your ability. I guess when I was touring constantly, living out of suitcase, setting up offices wherever I was, that kind of thing there, like, I just got to make a good balance between that. Absolutely. I've got a different view on burnout. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, of course I do. I think it's I, I think it's a little bit um, over um, pumped into the activists. Um, I think that you have to be doing enough activism first before you even consider the burnout uh, thing. Uh, in, from my perspective, right? People go out and they work uh, jobs like seventeen hours a day. They might be entrepreneurs and they're pumping their 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 whole life into this job mm -hmm. for money, yeah. right? And you know they do this for fifty years mm. and they ain't burning out. You know, sure. um, it just it just depends on whether you love what you do. I think that that should be the driving force. But if you've got this purpose, like I've got this purpose driving mm. me, and yeah, it can be tough, but I wouldn't see myself doing anything else. So so that so for me that that I don't even have the burnout in like obviously mm. I'm careful. I, I don't I'm not silly, but I don't I don't focus on that burnout aspect of it. But uh, for mm. me, because I just think, well, I, I love this so much. I'll wake up for it. And yeah. if, if, if I didn't have this driving me forwards as a purpose, um, you know, I, I, my life would be so much more dull. So I'm so grateful for the opportunity constantly to be hammering this workout. Um, so my view on, on burnout is a little bit, you know, it's changed a lot. It's mm. changed a lot. Uh, you know, I think um, we can push ourselves further than we give ourselves credit for. And um, I think that, you know, obviously there's a level that you can reach where mm. you can push too hard. But for me, a lot of people might not be reaching their full potential yet. And, you know, I want people to know that they, they are quite, you're, you're actually more capable than, than you think. Mm. And you can push yourself a little bit harder than what you think. And yeah, I just want to make sure that, you know, before we start talking about burnout, let's, let's see, I, I, do you feel in your heart that you're putting in enough effort, mm. you know, enough work? And yeah, that's the way I look at it. I think as well, something to consider is that you're a strong person, man. You've been through a lot in your life already, which yeah. has hardened you in certain ways. I don't even know if it's hardened the right way because you're also very soft in certain ways when it comes yeah. to being sensitive to the plight of animals, mm. which a lot of people are not. Um, but yeah, you've seen a lot, you've been through a lot. Um, you've put yourself right there face to face with it all. A lot of people can't even get anywhere near that close. And mm. I think, I think you know, burnout for you would look very different to somebody who is not so accustomed to violence, to that yeah. kind of thing. So I think that when it comes to animal rights activists, you know, but like someone could just, maybe maybe burnout isn't necessarily the word, but almost like um, post-traumatic stress. Trauma. trauma. Yes, trauma from, from witnessing, even just going to a vigil and witnessing having a moment yeah. connecting with one of these animals they look you in the eyes pleading with you yeah you're looking back at them helpless to you can't yeah. do anything in that moment for this individual yeah except for share their story um that maybe it's not burnout but um that would be different right that would be your psychological you know response to seeing something traumatic mm. um when i'm thinking of burnout i'm yeah. thinking of repetitive work to the point that you mentally cannot deal with it anymore because you've just sure. overrung the sure, cogs sure, sure. to the point where you're burnt out right. you know and i hate this i hate this but, but, mm. but the way i was looking at it is like so with with activism there's obviously a thousand different forms of activism mm -hmm. so you could be doing different forms of advocacy that you've interweaved into your your work life you could be you know promoting the message on social media you know the, the thousands of ways you can sure, advocate sure. um if you love this if you really want to make a change and you love this and this is your purpose, obviously you don't have to go facing animals every single day, but there's ways you can incorporate activism into your lifestyle without burning out forever, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, the way that I was seeing it is that people were forced to go work a job that they hate mm. 
till they retire. Mm. And they're working 12 hour days, mm. you know, and they ain't burning out because they have to do it. They have to do mm. it. So it, for me, there's no question. I, I'm committed. I have to do this. And I, I, it's also my purpose. So for me, like, it, I guess we have to separate the idea of burning out uh, with psychological trauma from facing what the animals are going through. Well, again, yes, absolutely. But again, I think that you have a great, it comes back to perspective. Yeah. And your perspective is, I love this. Yeah. I love getting up in the morning, having a purpose, being able yeah. to help reduce suffering on this planet, yeah. to see tangible, my tangible impact and receive from people stories about how your videos have helped these people. You love it. You found the love in there. Yeah. You know, you're not just an activist um, hating, hating your way through it. And I think that's so important, man. Like, find a way you can be an activist that you love it, or um, yeah, or just find the good in whatever it is that you're doing. There's there's so much good to be found, and that's just a skill to learn. Yeah, yeah, about about um, having a practice in your life of you might as well love it if you're gonna do it anyway. This is the way you've chosen to do it. Yeah, how are you gonna make? How are you gonna? Yeah, are you gonna suffer through it every day? Are you gonna love through it every day? And I think that's a testament to your perspective mm. to um to finding how to love the work you do because for somebody else being in front of the camera mm. going to slaughterhouses responding to a bunch of hate you know people criticizing you um just the all the ups and downs of it like <laughs> so many people would not want that job no. man. and you may not have as well if you had a different perspective of it but i think it's really great that you've found a way to love your work. That's something anyone can do. That's why I was trying to get to your, because you pulled yourself out of suffering and I pulled myself out of suffering too. Mm. Suicidal, drug addiction, a very violent, hectic environment. Like my life wasn't very, very um, scary and, I, and filled, riddled with anxiety and deception mm. and violence constantly. I didn't know whether I was going to live or die the next day. And, you know, people being assaulted and kidnapped and just war going on all the time, yeah. paranoid. And it was a very nightmarish reality for me pulling myself out of that suffering and the gratitude i experienced and like wow i've got to give back now like this this burning desire to mm. make sure my life wasn't a complete failure and like make sure that i'm you know giving back so you had a very you know impending sense of your own demise mm. and has that helped you like with your perspective on things like well I'm sure it has in many ways. I think for me, you know, every day is an opportunity to do mm. something and you only have a certain amount of opportunities. This tattoo I've got on my fingers actually, it is the numbers 52594876. It's the amount of minutes in a hundred years and it is based off a Dalai Lama quote that says, we visitors on this planet for 80, 90 years max kind of thing. Yeah. And during that time, we should do something meaningful with our lives contributing to the happiness of others is the most meaningful thing you can do. Mm. So I think, you know, having death is so avoided in our society. We don't mm. look at dead bodies. We, in, in certain cultures, you burn the dead bodies as part of ceremony. We don't, we're so uh, detached from it all. Mm. And I think, yeah, I guess that helped me have some sort of um, attachment to the idea that I'm gonna die, I'm not here forever continue to remember that because you may just use your days differently and how do i want to use my day i want to contribute to doing something good that i can do and you know i think um for sure what i just put a post up then actually just on the way here it was a photo of a 67 year old man and a young woman they were both marching side by side at the animal rights march i believe it was mm. 67 years old approximately 150 animals are eaten by each individual every single year. So this individual has eliminated his contribution to the direct death of 10,000 other individuals. And man, that's one thing that guy did that, that did so much good every single day. He just ate that plant-based mm -hmm. diet kind of thing. We have even more power than that at this point when we have social media, when we have a reach to 100 people, 1,000 people, 10,000, 100,000. Some of us have reached to a million people. To be able to, there's no better, this is what I said in my post, show me a better way 
to reduce suffering on this planet at this magnitude. Mm. Just someone changing their diet, someone changing instead of cow's milk to get soy or rice or almond or coconut milk, having beans or tofu or tempeh instead of meat, having tofu scramble instead of eggs or avocado on toast or peanut butter on toast instead of eggs. That is so simple. Show me an easier way to save so many lives, to reduce so much suffering. There isn't one. And so that's why each day now that I have a bit more perspective, okay, I'm going to die. So how do I want to spend my days? Well, I do want to enjoy my life. I think that's important too for strategic reasons when it comes to promoting animal rights. Also just for my own personal, I want to see what I can do with my life in different ways. But the vast majority of the dedication is going to lifting the bottom up, helping mm. the ones right at the bottom. And um, there's many groups that are suffering in this world uh, when it comes to, and, and I want them all to be helped. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that there's activists for many different causes. I don't want everyone to just jump onto animal rights. Mm. Uh, I want everyone to be helped where all, you know, there's much suffering going on. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the easiest way to reduce suffering, to reduce violence, to improve the health of the planet, to improve the health of humanity, spiritually and physically, I can't think of an easier way than just promoting a plant-based diet to each other and then to our audiences as well. And and wow, what a gift. Okay, so what do we have to do? We write a post each day, we make a video, we have these conversations, literally your words. You don't need to go to war. You don't need to battle for this. In a way, it's a battle, but also you can just, I was on the train on the way here, bro. I was wearing my vegan hat. This dude goes to me, sits down like sort of hard looking dude, goes, I like your hat, bro. I go, thanks, bro. I appreciate that. I just chilled. I thought I'll just leave and see if he says anything else. He goes, my nine-year-old, my nine-year-old girl is vegan. I'm like, whoa, smart girl. He goes, yeah, my baby mama, she is, she's been vegan for like five years. I said, well, good for her, man. You know, being vegan is such a, a lifestyle upgrade. It's so good for you, man. I feel so good. I'm so grateful that I'm not dining on the corpses of murdered, tortured animals anymore. Bro, I can't tell you how good I feel. <laughs> Whoa. And he's just like, really? I'm like, oh, bro, I promise you the food is so good. Because I've seen some good vegan food. I'm like, you gotta taste some good <laughs> vegan food, man. And he leaves there and he's like, thanks for the chat, bro. I'm like, bro, yeah, of course. Like, so good talent. He's like, all right, all right. I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm like, sick. And he rolls out. I'm like, cool. We spent two minutes talking. This dude is definitely way more feeling veganism than before. What does that mean that we had that conversation? Potentially 150 innocent beings who feel pain and suffer just like us won't be murdered because of this guy each year amazing. now. Um, yeah, it is. And amazing. it actually gave you energy. That, converse, so that conversation that. was a good, like, do you feel like when you're having these outreach conversations, even to the, that, like you feel energized after these conversations? Um, well, generally. A positive, it was a positive interaction. Bro, I like. just feel like, oh, so positive. And I just, I, you know, do I feel energized? I wouldn't necessarily say it gave me energy. I just felt so grateful to have that information yeah. to share, man. I was like, wow, I just helped my brother. I don't know this guy. I just helped this guy make such a vital connection to yeah. his compassion that's going to help his health. Forget the animals for two seconds. I help his health so much. So he can connect with his daughter more and more compassionate level. But then for the animals, so they don't get their throat slit, so they don't get their baby storm mm-hmm. from them and hooked up to these machines and slaughtered in all these horrific ways. Yeah. Yeah, man, I, felt, I just felt like, wow, this little bit of information I know, if you... Like this, this is all it comes down to. You can get every single essential nutrient you need from plants. Mm. Therefore, any type of animal consumption is completely needless and unnecessary. And because every single animal product comes from violence, needless violence, then therefore it is inherently immoral mm-hmm. and unnecessary. Mm-hmm. That, that's it. So having that information and just being able to share that and that being able to do so much good, I'm just like, wow. Every vegan is sitting on such a gold mine of information that can be articulated so simply, that is so logical yeah. and impossible to argue against. I'm just so happy to have it. So when he left, I just thought, I'm so glad I know this. I'm so glad I can share this. I'm so grateful for how much good veganism can do for the world. That's how I felt about it. 
You make it sound so simple. So it, do, it doesn't always turn out that simply though, does uh, it? <laughs> Let's that, be honest here. <laughs> yeah, well, um, you know, it doesn't. It doesn't always turn out that simply, but I think it's almost impossible for somebody to speak to an educated vegan, mm -hmm. no matter how they respond in the moment, without going away and thinking about the hypocritical claims they just made. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the main thing I hear uh, is like that vegans are hypocrites because they cause harm. And, but anything that they can say against a vegan can be you know, said to the magnitude of 10 back to the person who's also paying for animals to be stabbed on top of the harm that they cause. Mm -hmm. So like what the only, like where do people, what, what is the main thing that you hear, the main objection, the main justification that you hear on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, first, just on that point, vegans aren't being hypocritical in asking everyone else to reduce their suffering as far yeah. as practically possible just because we can't be perfect. Yeah. Veganism doesn't claim. Veganism is the path to perfection and, uh, and zero harm. That's right. not what veganism is. I don't know if there's some sort of um, group that claim that. I don't think it's possible, so I assume not. Veganism is the path to cause the least amount of harm as practically possible. So it's not hypocritical to be vegan mm -hmm. and to ask everyone else to strive to reduce harm. The vast majority of harm is food animals and other animals that are tested on and exploited for entertainment and different things. But the vast majority of it is in food. Yeah. And so it's not it's not at all hypocritical for people to ask people to make this very simple lifestyle change of just choosing the thing next, the soy milk instead of the cow's milk, for example. Um, that's a very valid reasonable thing to ask for yeah uh and it doesn't make us hypocritical that we still step on ants when we go for a walk or we drive on a road that has animal products in it we're being the best vegans we can be in a not yet vegan world mm -hmm. and as soon as a road opens up that's a vegan road with no animal products in it who do you think's gonna be first on that road it's gonna be all the vegans <laughs> trying to cause oh cool we can cause less harm now awesome um now when it comes to the most common objection i hear um, I think the most common objection that exists is probably just people don't think it's healthy. Whether that's the most that I hear or not, I think that's probably, I, th I think the, the probably the main ones that are stopping people from being vegan is one, they don't think they can do it in a healthy way. They, they believe it's not healthy. They've been told their whole life they need meat for protein mm -hmm. and they need dairy for calcium and they need eggs for omegas. And there's just no such thing as a healthy vegan. I read this study, I saw this clickbait headline. Yep. It just can't be done. Um, I think there's that. I think then a very, very big reason why people aren't switching to veganism is they think they can't. They don't have it in them. I've been eating this food my whole life. I love steak. I love chicken. I love eating eggs. How am I going to stop eating these foods? What am I going to eat? Just salad all the time? They have no idea how easy it is due to how many delicious, literally millions of vegan meals are out there that are just as satisfying, just as tasty, mm -hmm. just as filling. Yeah. And they got no idea. They're just saying, oh, I can't just live off lettuce, man. I don't even like tofu. How am I going to be vegan? Yeah. You know, I, I'm allergic to soy. Cool. I don't eat soy that often, but you don't need to enjoy tofu to be vegan. We yeah. got it all. We can make... Literally every food that you enjoy is there's a vegan version of it at a few clicks of your fingers on your phone or laptop away. Um, but I think that's a really major concern with people. I, I kind of want to go vegan, but I, I'm afraid that I'll fail. And if I fail, or I don't want to watch that footage because if I watch that footage, I'm gonna Be feel <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> no. yeah, I'm gonna feel compelled to change. And I don't want to feel compelled to change because I don't think I actually can change. I don't have it in me to do what these vegans do. I don't have that willpower. And the, the truth is you don't need willpower. You need motivation and you need to know how to do it in a sustainable way so you don't just go vegan for a week, eat a totally raw food diet, not get the nutrients you need and then fail. And then yep. go, oh, veganism isn't for me. I should um, go back to eating animals. No, you, there's a very simple way to eat healthy on a vegan diet, a whole food plant-based diet is what you should look into. That's an ideal vegan diet. You can add a little bit of processed food in there from yeah. time to time, it's not gonna kill you. Um, but ideally what you're sticking to is a whole food plant-based diet. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, grains, seeds, beans. This can turn into pastas, burgers, pizzas, uh, vegan ice cream, all kinds of different delicious, amazing foods can be made from these very simple basic foods. Yeah. And so I guess what you're saying is it's, more of a practical issue for people uh, versus a principle issue, which would be like in principle, 
they believe that veganism is more ethical, obviously, and they see that the slaughterhouse footage and they're like, well, in principle, I agree with you, mm. but practically, I don't think I can achieve it and is it healthy? But these are all practical things that can be solved. Yeah? Absolutely. And I think that that took me a while to get to the point of really advocating for, well, in that way, with that knowledge. For a long time, I was just only focused on animal rights. This is why we should all be vegan. Mm -hmm. These individuals are why we should all be vegan. Mm -hmm. The facts, the figures, the graphic cruelty. And then I started hearing from actually from friends from school. A lot of friends from school said, I'm with you, man. I get you. Veganism's the way. How? I can't, I don't know how to do it. I'm like, shit, I haven't told anybody how to do it yet. Yeah. Okay, how do you go vegan? You, you know, actually the first time I realized this, I was almost finished my vow of silence the first year that I went vegan and yep. started activism on the day I went vegan. Um, I've been writing a blog every day, man, um, up to the point where I started cycling across Australia and I couldn't do it every day. But up to this point, I'd written every single day. This is what happens to the dairy industry. This is what happens here. This is that, this is that. And then I, I got all the way into the shit and I realized, oh my God, I've never told my audience how to do it. And I said, guys, I'm so sorry. This is how you do it. Shit, you just swap these things. These are the products that's available. Here's some websites with recipes. They've been so patient the whole time. <laughs> like, yeah, was how, man. And then um, actually a couple of years ago, I heard from a friend of mine who was a good friend in school and she said, I'm with you, man. I, I think what you're saying makes so much sense. It's so logical. Um, I love animals. I don't want to cause this harm to them. Can you share more recipes? Can you can you share more practical suggestions? Yeah. And and yeah. And then I started thinking about okay. So how did I go vegan? Well, I went vegetarian first. Mm -hmm. um, and then that opened me up again to, you know, I was always just go vegan, go vegan. And and now my approach has changed. Now I say, go vegan. That's what you got to do. That is the least we should. Dude, don't even see that as an end goal. That's the starting point. That should be the least we should do. Mm -hmm. Our moral baseline in society. Stop harming the innocent. Yeah. That's, it's it's anti-slavery. It's anti-oppression. It's anti-violence. It's in alignment with laws we already have. It's just extending those laws to pigs, cows, chickens, fish, and all the other animals that we legally exploit. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just totally obvious and logical. And then on top of that, you can you know spread the message, hopefully, um, in countless different ways. Um, but... When it comes to, oh man, I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Practical. Um, yes. When it comes, so, so thank you. Thank you. So when it comes to how to get to being vegan, now my suggestions have changed. Now I do say, and this is something I used to be totally against. Now I'm saying, you know, person dependent, I gauge a person based on where they're at, but I will give them every option that has been known to work for people. Mm -hmm. Going vegetarian has been known to work for countless people. When I did a speech, in Ottawa at the parliament building, like out front of the parliament building after a march last year, huge crowd of vegans. And I said, put your hand up if, I was curious for myself, put your hand up if you went vegan before, if you went vegetarian before going vegan. Mm -hmm. Nearly every single person put their hand up. I thought, wow, okay. We don't need to demonize vegetarianism so much. It is a stepping stone. Yeah, some people get stuck there way too long and that isn't something we should support. Or, or say, yeah, just go vegetarian and take your time. It's not like that. It's You can still suggest paths to veganism that are practical, but in a way that isn't selling out on the animals. It's in a way that's just giving people something to do that has some momentum to take them to the next step. And did they, did, I want to know how they receive the message, though, because for me, a lot of people, it's very obvious that meat is hacked off of an animal. Mm. So they might make the decision to go vegetarian intuitively. Um, did they get the full message before going vegetarian? And like, because a lot of veg, like, and what does it take to push a vegetarian out of that comfort zone? Mm -hmm. Great questions. I think that, Look, a lot of the time I won't do this as well, let me just say. A lot of the time I'm not saying in all my posts and videos, go vegetarian first, do this, go meatless Monday first, eat vegan for breakfast first and lunch. These are options that I think can be useful to getting people to being vegan. Mm. Um, but I don't always do that because I also know that there's a lot of people who just need the message, go vegan tomorrow, now, like very, very, as soon as possible. Um, and they will just figure that out and do it. 
But I think there's also a, a, I'd say probably just based on experience in interacting with people, mm. a larger group of people, the more mainstream people who do have maybe less of a uh, motivation mm. or feeling of ability to be able to make this change. I think that's a large group of people who are totally scared off by the idea of being vegan. And to the point where you've got it written right here, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Mm. They, they are doing that. They're like, I can't be perfect. I can't be vegan. So I'm just going to stay and do what I'm doing. Even though I don't necessarily want to be here, but I don't think I can get there. So I'm sh- now I think it's important to go, well, I know that seems like a big jump, but how about this jump? You think you could cut out meat? Why don't you cut out meat for a week? See mm. how easy that is, how good the food is. And then maybe next week you cut out eggs. And then maybe the next week you cut out dairy. And in three weeks, you'll be there. And I know you can do that. Does that sound more achievable for you? Mm. And to a lot of people, they say, yeah, thanks for giving me some steps. How to go vegan overnight, that's, that's, we know we can, people can do it. Mm. But I can understand why it seems daunting to a lot of people. It feels like a huge lifestyle shift yeah. and, and upheaval and I'm going to throw out all my stuff and I'm, I'm not going to be a perfect vegan so maybe I shouldn't be vegan I still have products that are being tested on animals and I don't know what about my washing liquid and it's like you'll get to that yeah you'll get to that next time you run out of washing liquid just look up vegan washing liquid at the supermarket you shop at in the meantime what can you do tomorrow do you think next time you go buy sh- you go shopping you can get um, coconut milk or almond milk or soy milk instead of cow's milk is that achievable for you okay yeah that I can do okay cool Cool. So that's almost dairy done. Like there's, there's really very few steps to get there. And that's why, yeah, I got to a point where I just think from time to time with the right people or in the right way, it has seen, it's proven useful to give people different paths. To the same goal. Of course. So you, you're, you're, you're obviously advocating for veganism. It's just a path that, you know, dependent on the person, the path that they t- take to get there, but you're always explicit about what the end goal is. Of course, just, man. I would never, ever, you know. I, yeah, of course. Of course, I'd never Advocate say. for the dairy industry. Why don't you just go vegetarian? Yeah. I'm cool with that. Just yeah. vegetarian. But that, this that's perfect, fine. perfect good uh, quote that I use on the, it's on the whiteboard here. Don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Uh, good is veganism. It's not perfect. Veganism isn't perfect in and of itself, is it? Because mm. we are obviously still contributing to some harm by existing. And, you know, I want to talk to you about this because this has been a little bit of a topic. It's probably just a topic in the vegan movement. Not much. But what do you think about supporting these main stream companies that put on a vegan option uh you know and people go well you can't support companies so that are non-vegan um but they put on like a you know let's just say kfc subway you know mcdonald's uh, tesco they're putting on out of vegan range um are you someone who would say you know hell yeah or are you someone who would say no uh only support uh 100 ethical businesses what's I, your view i can't think of a better thing for the animal rights movement to yeah. be honest, bro. um I think one of the biggest issues with people going vegan is also the convenience factor. Yeah. It's too hard. What am I going to do? This is where I eat. I go to this supermarket. I go to this restaurant. I get this fast food. I'm like, they don't have vegan stuff there. What am I? I, don't, I can't do that. Yeah. At my job, there's no vegan places around. What do you want me to do? I'm gonna, how am I going to be vegan? To be able to have these options at these such popular restaurants. So it's been really interesting, actually. Tim Hortons, they have, I think, over 7,000 locations Mm -hmm. in Canada. They put the Beyond Burger in all of their stores and they advertised it every store I drive past, huge billboards on the highway. I'm like, plant-based meat options. This is amazing. Wow, they're really normalizing it. The convenience factor is through the roof. Yeah. Incredible. I'm so happy. Absolutely. And and they're selling out of it. Yeah. Um, so that's Tim Hortons. They did the same at A&W. They were selling out of the Beyond Burger. Yep. They just brought it into Subway, selling out, just yep. absolutely dominating. There, Yeah, there's so many, ama- Starbucks bringing in vegan options um, and just so many different places bringing in vegan options. I never heard any negativity from, on my post at least, sharing this. And I share every single one of them yep. saying how amazing I think this is to have these vegan alternatives in these such mainstream places where people are going to be like, heard about vegan stuff or um, they, they go with their vegan friend, the vegan friend suggests, why don't you just try it, try this. People start seeing, well, this is delicious and I feel pretty good that it isn't actually an animal. I don't like causing animal cruelty. I heard these are healthier as well. They're better for the planet too. They have just as much protein. 
It's huge. It makes a lot of sense. It's huge. They it have is. millions of dollars in marketing. They have restaurants all over the world. They can reach the mainstream like no other. They're doing know? all the advertising for us, yeah. man. I'm like, thanks. Thanks for spreading the vegan message for us. I'm so stoked. The funny thing is, as soon as KFC did it, mm. everyone got so, not everyone, a group of people, um, a group of vegans are like, no, how can you promote this? Because James? KFC is very obviously selling tortured chicken pie. That's what right. that main right. thing. But, but, but I don't think that KFC are an inherently... They're not morally distinct from Starbucks. Of course Who not. sell cows dairy all over the world. I don't, I don't think you so know? either. But, but, but I saw the same people who are emotionally against KFC would happily walk into Starbucks and get the oat, uh, get an oat latte. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a second, where are, you, where are you getting shopping from here? Yeah. What's this new attachment? You have to go shopping at, you know, 100% vegan businesses. This is not achievable and it's not practical and it's a big problem to mm. even promote that. And I'm not, you won't see me promoting that because no, I'm trying to reach the mainstream. I want to reach those low income families that are just eating meat. They never heard of vegan before and they got, they walk into McDonald's and there's a McVegan there. Totally. And they can choose that over the slaughtered enslaved dairy cow's body that's minced up in the other burgers you know absolutely man and i think that you know yes kfc they kill so many chicks so many dead chickens uh, millions tens of millions it's not it's horrific yeah but if any anyone can change anyone slaughterhouse yeah. workers change we change people change businesses change too yeah and when they see a demand for ethical alternatives yeah for vegan alternatives they put one there, they see how well it goes. They put another, they put another. It's not gonna be long before it's VKFC. Yeah. Vegan Kentucky Fried, whatever they wanna call it. Vegan chicken. Kentucky Fried corn. <laughs> yeah, something like that. It's yeah. gonna be, and, and so that's what I want. I don't wanna just, boy, I don't think boycotting them is something that's gonna work because too many people are not interested. They don't even wanna go vegan and eat vegan alternatives, a lot of people. To ask them to boycott their favorite restaurant because they maybe have some unethical practices, it's just, it's not practical. It's not pragmatic. It's not gonna happen. No. Um, I wish everyone would just totally boycott every food, fast food chain and only vegan restaurants, but that's just not reality. So let's work in what's reality. What are people gonna do? They can choose a vegan option at these places. And that's what people will do. That's why it's selling out. And that's, yeah. and that's what's gonna motivate them to, wow, I wasn't expecting that to do so well. Let's invest. Let's invest some more money into creating more of these options. Whoa, they're selling out too. People want the option. It's it's almost like I was talking to Alex Hershaft and he's been a vegan for 40 years and in animal rights for, you know, a lifetime of well, longer than we've been here. Yeah. So, and he was saying like most people, they know that eating meat is cruel or factory mm. farming is cruel. You don't have to tell them anymore. Mm. They just need the convenient food choice. Absolutely. So what we need to do is change the food system from above so that there's choices available so people can, you know, it's convenient for people to choose, you know, like let's just look a fried um, corn, Kentucky fried corn burger right there. They don't have to, you know, they don't have to reach for anything. They don't have to go find a vegan restaurant somewhere. Yeah. It's right there. So it's on every corner. It's, yeah. On every corner. People will make the moral want, choice if it's dude, convenient. They want to, they want to. They're just like, oh, it's a bit harder yeah. at vegan places. We don't have many around. Oh, is that KFC? Well, that I can do. Yeah. I was at Subway. I can do that too. These are the places that are in every food court, in every shopping center, on every corner. And it this helps. Is, before, that wasn't a thing. I'd be like, where am I going to get vegan food? It, no uh, way. It wasn't in my consciousness before. I always thought it was impossible to get a vegan burger in McDonald's or KFC or Subway. I was just yeah. like... And it goes from being hard to find to being on every corner. Um, every country on every earth. Country. On <laughs> earth. <laughs> Wow. And you know what? One of the biggest things what that about, will happen to this What do you movement. think about ex-vegans? You know, like, think of that. Think of people who go vegan and then they, they, they're struggling to, for because of convenience or it's, you know, the, the family issues where their family's going into a restaurant and, you know, there's no vegan options and, and that social pressure. Mm. But if there's vegan options in these restaurants and we're supporting them and promoting them and, you know, they're going to KFC, their friends have had a few beers that night, they're going to KFC, there's a vegan option for them. It's just, it's just helping people stay vegan as well. Of course it is, man. Yeah, so, social pressure is, a, you know, for, for certain personality types. Yeah. They want to, a lot of people would just want to fit in and just do what everyone else is doing and, don't don't want to be asked questions about their lifestyle and don't have the confidence to answer and that's a, that's a legitimate concern for people. Oh, I'm going to be different. People are going to look at me different. I'm not going to get invited to things and 
I'm, I'm not going to be able to go out to eat with my friends and my friends won't invite me because there's no vegan option there. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you don't have to worry about it. There's going to be a vegan option there now. You can eat with them. It's going to look the same. It's going to taste the same. In fact, it's probably going to motivate your friends to eat like you too. Yeah. Maybe out of respect, maybe out of curiosity, maybe they'll taste and be like, that's actually delicious and they care about animals too. Maybe they would make changes for the same reasons you do. The convenience factor going through the roof is for sure. I mean, I, it's I, one of the biggest. So do you feel that's man. one of the biggest convenience? Hundred percent. If everybody, if everybody could just, if everybody could go out right now, go to do all the same shopping they could do, eat the exact same tasting food that they can, and it be vegan, of course they would do that. They'd be like, it, it would. You'd have to be so illogical not to do that. Um, what what would they do it for? Because they want to contribute to animal cruelty. Because they want to destroy the planet. Because they want unhealthier food. We have the same food that tastes the same, that looks the same, in the exact same location as where you already eat. And it is better for all the reasons. You can live perfectly healthy on it. And it's just as convenient. You would have to... What kind of person wouldn't choose that? Yeah. It makes no sense. So it just comes down to... But there's, there's certain other factors as well. So it comes down to educating people that, yes, this is a healthy choice, a healthier choice. It's better for you and your family. Mm -hmm. Make this choice when possible. And then it's like, it's always possible. You can do this anytime you go shopping now. It's become more convenient than ever. And not only is it more convenient than ever, but you can eat the same things you already eat. You like you like KFC? We got vegan yeah. KFC at KFC. Go enjoy. You, yeah. know, you don't have to be a healthy vegan if you don't want. We recommend eating a whole foods, plant-based diet. That's how you feel your best. If you don't want to do that, cool. Just stop killing animals in the process of you getting your calories. And you can easily do that by choosing the vegan alternatives. And if I was to like, you can't support KFC, you must only, I just think like, we we don't, we, we're not in a position to have that flexibility to go, you can only buy vegan food from here. We need people buying vegan food from wherever it's available. We, you know, the world's like, oh God, we need radical change. We need radical That's change. Really we right. need people working from below, we need direct action from above, totally. we need corporations putting mm. on vegan options, we need everything working yes. together. And the last thing I'm gonna be doing is like anti-vegan product activism. <laughs> yeah, I don't get that either. No. I'm not doing any of that either. <laughs> so, uh, and, and look, like, yeah, everyone's got their heart in the right place. Of course. You know, we all are just, we all want the same thing. Vegan world as soon as possible. Yep. Some of us have different ideas on how to get there. And that's fine. It's, you know, it's no hate on anybody with that opinion or anything. No. But um, me personally, I don't think that's a logical or consistent opinion. Um, and yeah, I definitely I definitely support vegan options being everywhere. It almost feels counterintuitive though, doesn't it? Because like you have, the, like everyone's got this emotional attachment to a place like McDonald's. Like I used to, I hate McDonald's. Sure, sure. McDonald's have their own slaughterhouses, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. But it's, it's, it's more of an emotional reaction. It's not a logical one. It's not up here like, okay, is this going to be good to have a different option for cows? Do cows want a vegan burger at McDonald's? I think they might. Like, I don't yeah, know. If I was a cow, I'd want a, a vegan burger in McDonald's, yeah. not a Joey burger. So, you know. Yeah, bro, I completely agree. That's a great perspective to look at it from. Let's talk about um, where, where, so you, you've obviously achieved a lot in a short amount of time. Um, you know, you haven't been vegan for 10 years, even what, you've been vegan for five years? Six, years? six years in January. Six years in January, you've achieved a lot, you know, and I'm really grateful that you're still kicking and still going and still promoting the message because I know that it, you know, just can feel like there's a weight on your shoulders and mm -hmm. you, you did go through a bit of a hard time there about, I think it was about a year ago, you went for a bit of a hard time. Yeah. And, but now, what, what, where are you seeing yourself going from here? Well, I just feel better than ever, man. I'm taking yeah. care of myself more than ever before. Um, yeah. I actually just healed a neck injury I've had since I was 17. Wow. Every single day it was causing me grief. I'd spent thousands of dollars on it. I'd seen everybody. No one could do anything for it. And about three months ago, I realized I finally went back a little further. I thought I injured it when I was 21. I went back to when I was 17. Mm -hmm and realized the root cause of what I did and then just worked with that new understanding, healed my neck. So now I feel like, you know, I feel, man, I just feel so much better. I really want to take care of myself. A big part of, a big way that we can spread the message is through our health because people have this objection, you can't be a healthy vegan. Mm. So what I am focusing on right now is um, fitness, yeah. fitness and health. I want to show people how that you can build a body on a vegan diet. Um, I want to. I, we're about to release an ebook 
you got the you got a great recipe in there, bro. It's a recipe book um, with many of uh, many people who are out there influencing people on how to live a vegan diet, uh, live a vegan lifestyle. Um, so we've got a collection of everybody in there just sharing recipes and um, yeah, because that's a bit more not just why to go vegan. We also I want to focus also on how to go vegan, how to make this practical for people um, as possible. I'll continue posting every single day. Next year, I hope to be a little more set up so that I can focus a bit more on putting all the content that I do collect mm -hmm. into things that actually finally reach the world because so much I collect and then a year later, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to edit that video now because I haven't sat down and, you know, and I'm like, damn, I don't even want to put that out because I, haven't, I don't say it like that anymore. Yeah. I feel like I've evolved the way I think about it. Um, I'm focused as well, again, back into meditation, Vipassana meditation. Let's talk about that. Didn't okay. we just do a 10 day meditation? Oh, I'm like, day. we haven't even talked about yeah, it. it. Was Let's go. Absolutely life changing. Uh, it was my ninth course, mm -hmm. my ninth um, 10 day meditation course. I counted it up. I've done about 1500 hours of this particular meditation practice now. And I just see so much value in it, man. So much value for humankind. Veganism is to liberate animals from their suffering. And Vipassana meditation is to liberate humans from our suffering. I just see so much value in it. I think that when people can learn to um, learn some to use some of the techniques involved in this meditation, and, and I want to share them, that it can do so much good for the world, for the individual. When we are lighter, we shine further into more darkness. We can do more good. When we're suffering less, we can focus more on the suffering of others. I think it's extremely valuable for the animal rights movement and just humanity in general. Um, and you know, I'm, I have a, I feel, I guess I feel similarly to a duty to speaking up for the animals with the knowledge I've got. I feel a similar duty to speak about the Parsana right now, um, because yeah, when you, you know, when you have something so good, you want to share it with the world. Um, and aside from that, you know, coming up next week, we're going to Indonesia. We have access to some slaughterhouses, so. We'll be getting some powerful footage and I'm sure we'll turn a lot of people vegan uh, who have maybe not seen such direct violence because of their choices before. Um, and yeah, man, just more of the usual. We have, I have some speeches lined up at some schools for the end of the year and I'll just continue to be accepting as many opportunities as possible, hopefully with bigger platforms, hopefully with um, people who aren't vegan. I've been talking to Kelly Slater lately. Amazing. Yeah, um, I've been um, um, Esso from Bliss and Esso. Oh, wow. His wife was messaging us the other day and we had a little back and forth. Um, so, yeah, I just, I'd like to, you know, I'm trying to be as approachable as possible. I want to, um, I want people to feel comfortable with having me on their non vegan platform mm -hmm. so that I can go and just speak about what, um, what I think the way that the world needs to shift and how we can all do it. And uh, aside from that, in terms of big projects, you know, at this point, it's just more of the same, man. Yeah. Because what, you know, I'm, I'm happy with the impact that I've had and that I'm having. So I'm just going with the flow of it. What I'm doing is working. I receive messages, like I'm sure you do, all day long from people going vegan. And it gives me a lot of confidence. And it also makes it a lot easier to block out all the negative people who yeah. tell you you're doing it wrong. Don't do it like that. You need to do it like this. You shouldn't have said that. I'm just like, okay, well. Show us your results, mate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Show us your results. Um, we can, I just wanted to talk about like insight. You got insight from your Vipassana? Dude, it was so good. Um, okay, so the Vipassana technique is described as the technique that the Buddha, the only thing the Buddha taught once he became enlightened, and this is a story. I'm not saying I definitely believe in the story of the Buddha, but this is how it's described. And the benefit I've seen from it, I feel um, it definitely reigns, you know, there, there feels a lot of truth to it. Whether the actual story of the process of the Buddha's life, I don't know about that. But this particular technique I believe in very, very, very strongly. The technique is simple. It is two equal parts. It is observation of the physical sensations on your body. And it is equanimity, which means accepting the moment however it presents itself. When you combine those together, the technique means you are looking you constantly have some awareness on the physical sensations on your body. Itching, tingling, pressure, pain, whatever it is. The reason why that's important and why you're not working with the thoughts you have or the emotions you have is because, and this is the Buddha's contribution, when you one of your senses is hit, 
for example, you see something pleasurable or, un- or unpleasurable, you think something in that way, good or bad, all your you know, touch, um, hear, smell, the very first thing that happens, the deepest part of your mind when you react is there is a sensation somewhere on your body. And we either do one of two things. We either have a sensation and it's a pleasant sensation because something we saw was good and then we respond by getting attached to it. Oh, it feels good. But because everything, every sensation as well is impermanent, as it starts to dissipate, like that's why people crave drugs. You feel good and then as the drug hit starts to go, you're like, I want that drug again. (laughs) Yes, more please. (laughs) Um, you You become attached to that sensation. And so you suffer because of that attachment or it's an un pleasurable sensation and you resist in the moment you suffer straight away because there's something not nice let's say there's pain and not only is there pain which is just how it is but you also add to that pain by going oh there's pain i don't want to be in pain i hate pain pain sucks why me um and technique the technique of a past night is instead of reacting to these things to observe them there is pain Observe it, feel it, go into it, face it, because that'll make you stronger. So what, is this kind of like a conscious detachment? Um, no. Like an, you're emotionally detaching from, like an obs- observer? Or? You are detaching from reacting to it. Okay. You just, it is how it is. Why Why create a craving to something that is so temporary? Why create a aversion to something that is, it is wow. already there? It seems like the root of... All addiction, nearly. (laughs) It is, man. It is definitely the path out of addiction. Wow. Um, I had an eating disorder the first time that I went there, and I was doing a lot of drugs um, leading up to this part of my life, the first time I went to Vipassana. And, um, yeah, I that just, man, it is perfect addiction therapy. It is, you know, they do a similar thing called cognitive behavior therapy. CBT works in a very similar way to Vipassana. But um, this technique for people with addiction is Phenomenal, bro. It gets you out of there. It's the it's the path. Doesn't mean you'll come out in your first ten day course, but what you learn in the course is the technique that you can use every day for the rest of your life. Wow. It's also why when I'm talking to somebody and someone else, and this is a big thing that a lot of people that follow my journey, I think, value in the content I put out. How do you stay so calm, bro? How did you not? I, if that was me, I would have got so angry. I would have, you know, said this and said that. And for me, it's just for past now. Yeah. The anger comes. But I have a choice to react to that. Sen- like really, the anger comes after the sensation. Mm. The sensation of anger is generally heat or, or tension or mm. tiredness. And, and that can lead to anger very quickly. Or you can just observe that for what it is and choose to respond rather than react blindly. Mm. So that it's a huge part of why I think I'm able to get through to people. I don't take their bullshit. I don't, I, and what I mean by that is they're trying to get me to react. Provoke a response out of you. Uh, you keep that. And, and it, it, almost, it almost calms them down. Of course it does. Yeah. Because you're not responding on that energy and they can bring you down or you can bring them up. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I just think this is a very valuable thing to um, to teach and, and not just to teach, even just to practice. I'm, you know, I'm committed to practicing every day at this point, which I have been back and forth in the past. But now I think it's very important because um, for a lot of people, there's a lot of people following me online and um, I want to be the best activist and person I can be, the best representative mm-hmm. um, I can be for those people to look up to so that, you yeah, know, like, because that's just the reality of my role right now. So there's a responsibility there to strive to be a good person. You're, you've got a very big influence. You lead by example and you have influenced me as well, like with my advocacy too, just the way that you um, connect with people through that chill way. I think it's super valuable to the movement. And, and also some people can be turned off by certain approaches and they come to you and, then, and you know, you sort of sweep them up with your, you know, it, it's almost like you draw people in and you don't, people don't feel attacked. You know, mm-hmm. you, you're really understanding and it's, it's almost like the energy you, you generate when you speak as well isn't, isn't aggressive. I'm, I'm more assertive and mm-hmm. can sort of put people on their back foot, but it's really good to be conscious of how people are, the message is landing on people. Yeah, if I thought it, you know, I've tried other ways. Yeah. And if I thought those other ways were better for me, I would continue to do them. Mm-hmm. I'd do whatever I felt that was working best. But for me, this is by far proven to be the most effective way mm-hmm. of reaching the heart and mind of people. I think when you attack somebody or they feel attacked, yeah. you are forcing them to put up their defenses. And yeah. that is a barrier yeah. between what you're trying to tell them and it hitting them where it needs to hit them. Um, so, yeah, this is something I'm going to be focus- focusing more on practicing because... Um, I think it's just going to help me be a better activist and, you know, hopefully continue to um, show people that this is an effective way of 
promoting animal rights and also it's a way that helps us because when you're consistently generating aggression and hostility towards other people yeah. that is going to lead to you feeling frustrated feeling negative emotions feeling like you don't want to do it it's not as good having maybe less effective um, interactions that maybe make you feel like oh what's the point and you know so yeah it just comes down to um, effective communication and and live in it because we're asking everyone to be compassionate to everyone mm-hmm. that's what we're saying be compassionate to everybody including pigs, cows, chickens and fish Dr. Martin Luther King said the means we use must be as pure as the ends we seek so to me that means you want a compassionate world you better show how that's done because a lot of people don't really know no. and so yeah that's I'm still trying to grow in compassion every day man Amazing. Um, everyone so your ninth um, Vipassana you didn't have one specific thing that you took away that I, you had two, like... I had two big things I had two big things um, they were ma- mainly related to the technique actually so the, the first thing was that um, it was a, first of all it's a completely different course to any other course I've ever done mm-hmm. um, it's taken me this long excuse me a second it's taken me this long is that say please meditate now <laughs> alarm to meditate <laughs> <laughs> it's taken me this long man nine courses to um, understand this technique and it was just ridiculous because it's so simple my mind just made it so much more complicated than it has to be yeah which is just so funny um, it's, it's as simple as I already said it if all you're doing is looking at your sensations and just being accepting with whatever you find you're doing Vipassana and this is where I got confused. I thought Vipassana, it, it was something special. If I was doing Vipassana, there'd be great vibrating sensations. Like, no, you could be doing Vipassana and, and feel numb, but you're still doing the technique and that's all you need to remember to do. It's not about getting, if you have pleasurable sensations, it means you're progressing. And if you have negative, painful sensations, it means you're regressing, not at all. Mm-hmm. You, the, the way that those sensations manifest is completely irrelevant to what to where you're at on your journey. Of, okay towards enlightenment or whatever reducing suffering in your own life it's totally irrelevant so that was a big lesson for me to stop judging my sensations and that's what i was doing i was like oh good sensations yes i'm doing well and i finally shook that after nine courses and um nine courses nine (laughs) a long long (laughs) time it's been a long time so yeah just you can so just, learn from James's mistakes. <laughs> you can just sit there for nine courses. Yeah, pretty much. Because <laughs> what I was doing, this is one of the big things I was doing. You know, obviously you meditate, you do the technique, you scan through your body, but then you just go start thinking about something. Yeah. And then you come back, and I do one of two things. I'd either go, oh, awesome, good work, you came back. Um, okay, back to meditation. And I, so I was judging my return, or I'd come back and be like, damn, you were gone for so long. You're here to meditate, bro. Get back to work. And I'd judge it as well. And this time I started coming back and just, no judgment, just going straight back into the technique. Um, I think that helped me a lot. And um, man, what's the other thing that I learned? Um, yeah, I guess that, I guess that were probably the two main things, bro. Wow. So yeah, it was it was just you know helpful to come to that. And now I feel like you know different to ever before. I am I am spending more time with some awareness inside my body far more frequently before I'd be like, okay, I better meditate. And then I'd sit down and I'd mm-hmm. do that technique and then I'd walk away and I'd leave it in my meditation spot almost. When I feel like I'm walking around with it a little more, I'm talking to people and I, I'm talking to people. I'm very conscious. I'm very there, but I'm also have some awareness inside. We spend so much time being aware outside. Now I have some awareness of what's going on inside. And that awareness anchors you into the present moment. It anchors you into your own personal inner reality. And it gives you the opportunity to just be accepting and that brings a lot of inner peace. Um, and that's what I'm feeling now more than ever, a level of inner peace that hasn't been there before. It radiates, it radiates, because even after when I saw you last night, as soon as I start talking to you, you, you have a calming presence. And you can, it, it, you're generating a calming presence. Because I'm, I'm a very, in, I'm obviously, I'm an intense guy. <laughs> you know, used to be more intense, I've calmed down a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But when, I, when I'm just having a conversation with you, I always leave feeling a little bit more chill and a little bit like you, you're radiating this chill energy. So I, I think, it, you know, there's definitely a knock-on effect of, you know, changing yourself and how you affect people around you. Yeah, totally, man. I think that, um, I, first of all, that's awesome to hear. And yeah, I appreciate that because, you know, like I'm so far from perfect. I did nine courses and I probably need to do 9,000 more. <laughs> but... Um, you know, I can definitely see that this technique is benefiting me so much. Like 10 days, 10 days prior to the meditation and then thinking about 10 days after, 
the change is just so significant and it's just from practicing this thing over and over again it's nothing special i didn't change my diet i do anything different i just added this um, and it's such a simple thing it's really not complicated any religion can do it you don't it's nearly just so beautiful man and so on and yeah and i think that you know that energy goes a long way especially when you're trying to reach the heart and mind of people you want them to feel comfortable in your presence you want them to feel um i want them to feel like family bro mm. i want everyone to feel like you're my brother you're my sister we're family i'm here just to share something what any any of the anything good i can do for you i want to do that for you and i hope you reciprocate and feel the same towards me and if not that's okay that's not going to change how i feel towards you amazing as so i think the way we view other human beings is like we can they can either separate us or bring us together and if we realize like you know we're all in this together we're all you know I've just realized something before you have and I, I, want, yeah. I want us to all join hands together and try to, you know, we're all against it. We're, like, have you ever met anyone that is for what happens to the animals on the screen? Like, yeah. it's just, they're all, oh yeah, that's bad, but it's just always these practical things. So mm. you took, like when people go, oh, your views, I'm like, these aren't my views. Most people share the same views as we do. They're just, they're just completely acting out of alignment with that. So I think like, like for me personally, like, after my um i had some ptsd therapy for the last year mm, after you, you know looking at people with more ex like love and more like mm. oh, wow they're just human beings and they're just totally. like more complex animals and they've been taught this lie and they're sort of they're acting out of alignment with their heart usually like for mm. the most the vast majority of people that's helped me sort of bridge the gap with people and i'm walking around at the train station i'm smiling at people i'm like Wow, yeah. we're humans. <laughs> it's, yeah, like, whoa. it's that connection I lost, so, you know. And it's oh, easy to be like looking at things from the animal's perspective all the time. And the humans are the devil. They are the, you know. But it's almost, it's almost like they're, they're committing an act of evil that they they don't know that they're contributing yeah. to. So I think we have to be rational about this. We can't just like be generating all this hate towards people who are committing an unconscious act of evil. Like they don't know. They don't. It's not evil if you don't know. And, and it's not even if you've been taught that it's okay mm. since you're a child. And necessary. Yeah, it's very complicated. It's not nothing you're abusing yeah. an animal for fun, like in your bedroom. There's a dog there, and you, you know, it's very complex. And we need to look at it like with all of its nuance and complexity. Yeah. Absolutely, man. I I couldn't agree more. There's a, you know, there's a lot of broken people out there, and we we've all been conditioned in different ways, and it's hard to break cycles. I know some of the best people I know sometimes do things that really aren't in alignment with who they are, doesn't make them bad people. Mm -hmm. and, and we're all striving to do better. And like you said, yeah, we all need to like just join hands and be like, we're all in this together. Let's, what do you know? This is what I know. How can you help make this? We all want a better world, right? More peace, less violence. Okay, so how can we share information to get us all to a better place? Um, veganism, <laughs> the funny, this is the best group ever because Everyone is welcome. Not only welcome, we're like, please join Come. us. It's not like, oh, we're vegans. We want to be better than everyone. No, no, you're not vegan enough to come into this vegan group. It's like, no, please. We desperately want everyone into this group. We know it's going to be better for everybody, for everything, for this entire planet, for countless reasons. Please join us. Here's some of the reasons why I can continue telling you more and more all day long. We can turn this into a 10 hour podcast. Um, but yeah, it's it's about realizing that yeah, you great man. I'm so glad that you le learned it before so many people. You learned about veganism first and and different things. Cool. I've learned stuff from so many other people who who aren't aware about veganism. It, it doesn't mean you go vegan and you're perfect and you know everything. This is just a thing that you were, had the privilege of understanding before. At this point, before the vast yeah. majority of the rest of humanity where we're in the top few percent there's a few percent or something of vegans out there and it only makes sense that yeah this will i i hope in every for all the reasons we've already mentioned that this will spread to 100 percent of humanity mm. um, and the people that it doesn't you know there's always going to be certain people that are wired a little bit differently but the fact is that this is in alignment with mm. the way that the vast amount of logical non-violent people Thing. This mm. is in alignment with that, and so yeah, it just makes sense that they'll also find the information that we found, realize that it is logical and the right thing to do, and then as all these other factors come into play, convenience and cross off their objections, they'll join the club, man. They'll join the party, and that's only good, man. We then yeah, the more the better. 
So that's from a vegan advocacy perspective and hoping that people take the message and make personal change. What do you think of civil disobedience and direct action as a way of shaking the system from above and forcing the mm. conversation into the you know the public arena? What do you think of like disrupting the system with protest, chaining people, chaining yeah. themselves up, and you know blocking roads? And mm -hmm. what do you think of that? It's excellent. Um, I can't say that I agree with every single. I, I wouldn't say that all activism is necessarily good activism mm -hmm. but i very very rarely see something that i don't think overall is a good thing mm -hmm. um, i think that disrupting and you know causing a disturbance in the norm that forces the issue on the table mm -hmm. forces people to think forces a conversation to be had makes people realize there's a choice what side are you on there are sides most people don't even know they have a choice what side are you on the side that is ending the animal holocaust or the side that is funding the animal holocaust mm -hmm. you're on one yeah. of them maybe you didn't know before today now you know the issue is on the table are you going to make a choice which choice makes more sense to you i think it's excellent man and um, i'm so grateful that there's people out there doing that but i'm also i don't want everyone to do that there are so many there are countless different ways people mm -hmm. can use their skills their talents uh their, their yeah their individuality their uniqueness to promote animal rights to spread the vegan message and um, I hope that we use every single avenue available including civil disobedience and disruptions amazing um, so I really appreciate you sitting down and chatting with me James and um, I just want to say that you continue to inspire me you always have inspired me and um, don't ever give up no matter what and what I've been saying is that I will make it uh, like an, a requirement that I will never give up because of any struggles so mm -hmm. I, I hope you feel the same way because you're a valuable valuable shining light uh, to this movement and I don't think it would be the same without you here so please just keep going and realize that you, you inspire more people than you realize and including other activists in the movement and yeah just keep going brother thanks so much brother i really appreciate that of course you inspire me in so many ways as well man and i the way that you continue to level up and step it up is you know a page a page that i hope every activist takes from your book man you're doing such an amazing job um i'm very grateful to yeah to you know we're so lucky to have the means we do to be able to spread the love and spread the message and um, i'm really glad that it's being taken you know taken received well and yeah i don't you know i've been through many struggles man um there's been times where i'm sure a lot of people or you know a group of people certain people wish that i would quit and mm -hmm. tried to get me to quit in different struggles mm -hmm. um and i'm so grateful at the time that was so hard so hard man it really forced me to look at myself and question myself why am i doing this yeah i'm so grateful for that because the answer was so clear i'm doing this for all the right reasons mm -hmm. and i'll continue to do it for those reasons and because those reasons are not about me there's no struggle that i can go through that will stop me fighting for them so amazing don't worry about that bro without the adversity there'll be no character building without the struggle you can't get stronger you know and i think that Absolutely. the people who are most built to take you know the, the hard times are put there for a reason so yeah that's mm. one reason i feel like you've been thrusted into the forefront of this movement so yeah i think that um we can all you know that's yeah there, there was a time where five years ago i was nowhere near the person that I am now mm -hmm. in terms of what I've been through and the growth I've had mm -hmm. and you know there's so many I, I was the worst public speaker I knew for mm -hmm. example in high school wow um so I guess yeah the lesson there is that you know you don't I remember looking up to activists thinking how do you say it like that my god I wish I had the words to articulate the vegan message I'm not helping anybody go vegan with the way I say things and now people say the exact same thing to me and you know anybody who's listening to this you have growth coming and mm -hmm. just continue to put yourself first of all create your clear intention what is it that you want to contribute to this world yeah. how do you want to live why are you doing this like what do you want what do you want to do with your life and then accept opportunities that push you out of your comfort zone that's how you'll grow 
say yes to things that you know are going to be hard, that you know are going to make you uncomfortable, and then you'll start becoming comfortable with those things. And then say yes to some new discomforts that will help you grow as well. And pretty soon, you know, the, the more you do that, yeah, the more value, the more value you'll be able to bring, and um, you know, and then that means the more vegans that will be out there. So, and we can change the world together like that. Yeah, we. All, yeah, that's the beauty too, man. Um, you know, for example, I met a guy last night who said, "Yeah, I watched your videos a few years ago. Now I'm an AV organizer, and mm -hmm. I do this and do that." I'm like, "Cool." And guess what? I bet you're now getting those kind of. Um, what you're saying to me, I'm sure people are saying that to you now as yeah. well. You say, well, actually, yeah, this is that. And, wow. You know, it's just paying it forward. I have, people did that to me. I'm just repeating and sharing the things that I learned from the people before me. And there's so many of them. And, you know, we just all... We're like all, candles that light each other up. Absolutely. And it turns into a, a big, like, fire that engulfs the world. And a good fire. A good fire. <laughs> <laughs> A, a happy fire of peacefulness and veganism. <laughs> Not like the fire that's burning in the Amazon to, to yeah. you know, deforest the Amazon for beef production. Yeah. How crazy is that? The lungs of the earth. You know what it is? It's the, it's the rain that comes down on that fire. Wow. Yeah. And we're all droplets. And there we go. There we go. That's a better, uh, you know, analogy to use. <laughs> given the vegan fire. fire movement. <laughs> it's crazy. But, you know, uh, one, one thing before we finish is that, that when the lungs of the earth are on fire, that gives the, the whole world a sense of urgency that they just don't get from, mm. you know, oh, some chickens are suffering totally. in a cage. So I think it, as terrible as that is, this might be the wake up call the world needs. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. I'm very glad to hear the climate scientists come out and say, 12 years, 12 years, are you listening? It's not long, we're in agreement that in 12 years, if we don't do something drastic to change, we're gonna be faced with a climate emergency that is going to displace millions of people and people are going to go, be going to war over resources like mm -hmm. food and water um i think that that's you know a it's a blessing in disguise for sure it's definitely more motivational when our survival is at stake we start listening yeah, our ears prick up yeah, a little bit more absolutely man yeah. absolutely um so you know as bad as it is it might just force things to happen sooner rather than later mm. and hopefully in time I hope so, brother. Thanks so Thank much you. for joining me, mate. I love you so My much. Pleasure, and brother. keep up the amazing work. You're shining <laughs> you light. Thank you, bro. You as well. I really appreciate it, my man. Cheers, brother. Bam. Boom, boom, baby. <laughs> Sick. It was like an hour and 30 minutes. We made that rain. Rain, rain, baby. How no, you got? Good. I'm great. Are you got a, oh, you're 444? I should roll right now. All right. Um, awesome, man. Really good. Yeah. Covered a lot of shit. We don't need to talk anymore. Already said it. <laughs> <laughs> See it, bro. I'm glad we did that, man. Oh, I'm so glad we did yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah.